Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Brian by Train by Tex. I hope you enjoy our videos. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, uh, this is Brian Collada again. I wanted to make a another video that follows up to my first video, which was on using the falling edge counters within Pico to help you determine the amount of degrees that one of these teeth represents. And I'm going to kind of follow up, but I'm also going to show you a way to use Pico's rulers to help you determine if you have a cam crank correlation type issue. Uh, the problem child car that we have right here is a 2005 F-150 with a 5.4 liter 3 valve. This engine is very common to have timing issues. Um, there's many reasons why they have timing issues, but I wanted to pick something that was familiar with you guys to help you relate to this issue, I guess. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is zoom in on 720 degrees of crank rotation. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm going to grab what's called a phase ruler, which is this green cursor right here. You're going to grab this, fir this first cursor, which is going to say zero, and you are going to put that at top dead center on your crank sensor signal. And then you're going to grab your second phase ruler and then put that at 720 degrees after, which is going to be your third pulse, third tall pulse on your crank sensor signal. Okay, and now you want to grab your conventional rulers. These conventional rulers are going to work hand in hand with your phase rulers to help you determine the amount of degrees between your first ruler and the ruler that you have selected. And then if you take this first ruler and go ahead and put it at one of your cam signal peaks, which is right here, and then grab another ruler and put it at your second cam signal peak. You will see in this ruler box that the first camshaft is 302 degrees after top dead center, and your second cursor is 321 degrees after top dead center. Okay, now we don't know necessarily that this is bad until we compare to a known good waveform. Your known good waveforms can be something that you've gotten from IATN, uh, from a friend, from a known good library that you have made yourself. You know, there's many, many ways that you can get waveforms from that are known good. Um, some of them are kind of sketchy. You gotta, you gotta, you know, weed out the uh, the good ones and the bad ones. But a known good should have on this specific engine these cam pulses should be written on top of each other, which you can clearly see they are not. Now this is only going to happen on this. I, I shouldn't say that. It should. This only happens really on this specific engine. It's uncommon to see these pulses written on top of each other, but on this engine they should be. Usually the case is you'll have two different waveforms and, and nothing will line up, and that's, that's known good. Yeah, you, that's why you have to compare to a known good waveform to really know if this is bad or not. So now I'm going to pull up a known good waveform. This was taken off a 2007 Expedition with a 5.4 liter. It's a different vehicle but it has the same exact engine. This waveform should look the same. And now I'm going to zoom in again at 720 degrees of crank rotation. I'm going to grab my phase ruler and go ahead and put that at the top dead center again at top dead center 720 after grab my conventional rulers and put them at 
the peak of my green trace and then the peak of my red trace. These waveform, these two patterns should be pretty close to being identical. There might be a little discrepancy, but you know that's just again this specific engine only. But now you can see on my known good example, I'm approximately 313, 315 degrees after top dead center. That's where these cams should be on this engine. Approximately 315 degrees after top, sets, top dead center is when this pulse should occur. Now if you keep 315 in the back of your head and go back to your bad example, I have one camshaft that is at 321 which is off and then I have another camshaft which is at 302 degrees off 302 degrees which is even further off oh, <clears throat> this, this green trace is advanced there, there is approximately 13 degrees that this camshaft has been advanced so that's, that's, that's a very quick way to see if you have a discrepancy between your pattern and a known good. If you don't use these rulers, all you're looking at is, is, a, is a pattern. You have really no way of knowing what good and bad is just by giving a glance at it. You have to use some kind of way of measurement to be able to determine how far off these cam signals are. Now, um, there is another way that you can get a more accurate pinpoint on the the way you line up your cursors I guess I would say if you take your your uh, your, your uh, amplitude cursor right here and put it at at the center line mark of that cam signal and then take your ruler and then use the make an X at where this pattern begins to fall you want to be right in the center of this pattern that is the most accurate position that you can use instead of lining your cursor up with the peaks the peaks you may not be you know too incredibly close unless you zoom in you know you can zoom in on this and get your cursor as close to the peak as you can it's kinda of hard to line it up that's why another most accurate way that to do this would be to use the X method which is to grab this cursor and then line it up with where these two positions meet and then do the same thing with your your red trace which is going to be right there and then right there that's where they meet so that's that's one way you can use your cursors as a more accurate way but again this is kind of nitpicking this is kind of the more advanced level I think the easiest the quickest way is to just use the humps of the pattern that's going to give you the quickest the quickest answer on the positioning of it you know that's that's typically what I do that's you know this is by different people's views of, of doing things. I mean, you can be really accurate or you can be really efficient. It just depends on how you want to to uh, do that. Um, again, we had approximately on our this is this is our bad trade. We had approximately 18 degrees difference between our our pulses here. You know, we had. Let me do. Let me do this one more time. Let me line these up. One there, and one there. So there's approximately 19 degrees difference between these two cam pulses that we know should be written on top of each other. Now, if you go ahead and do that falling edge counter that I explained in my first video. keep in mind this 19 degree differential if you take these rulers and line them up with the with the crank sensor 
you'll notice that there's 35 falling edges between your cursors between here and here. Don't forget the missing tooth. So there are 36 teeth that are on this crank sprocket. And now if you take a calculator and take 360 degrees and divide that by however many teeth you have, which is 36, that's really easy math, that should be 10. So every one of these teeth represents 10 degrees of crankshaft rotation. Now if we zoom back in on our 720 and then line up our cursors with both cam signals, we again come up with 19 degrees. 19 degrees is pretty close to 20 and if you see these these this crank signal right here you'll have you know that one of these tooth is 10 degrees and then another one of these tooth is 20 degrees well these cursors line up with that crank crank signal pretty close that's 19 degrees so that just justifies that that accurate that that falling edge counter is pretty accurate you know there we we figured out that every one of these teeth represents 10 degrees and then it shows up right here 20 degrees so that is a quick way to use the rulers within Pico to help you narrow down how many degrees of crankshaft rotation or how many degrees of camshaft rotation that your camshaft is out if you if you wanted to be more accurate on how on knowing how far they are advanced or retarded this is the, the, the most accurate way of doing it by using cam and crank signals it's a very efficient way of doing it it doesn't take that long to capture this waveform at all this is a very efficient way of determining without a shadow of a doubt that you have a cam crank correlation type problem uh, thank you for watching if you have any questions if you have any tips if you have any have any anything let me know uh, I will gladly answer your questions Thanks for watching.